Hi guys, thank you for coming back to my channel. Appreciate you guys coming back and I hope you out there taking care of yourself, living well, and all that good stuff you're doing. So today we're gonna to talk about the word my. Yes, the word my. A lot of us using the word my a little bit more than we should. And so today we're gonna to talk about how this word my can show ownership in your life and you're using it probably some ways a little bit too much or you shouldn't be using it at all so coming right up we're going to talk about it okay coming right up hey guys thank you for coming back to my channel appreciate each and every last one of you guys for coming back sharing this special time with me and um I put up a video every Monday and um, I appreciate you guys coming back and spending this time with me. But like I always say, if it's your first time, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, notification bell. So that way you'll be informed when I put up a new video and the ones that always come back and join me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming back, joining me. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about today about our talk topic about the word my, M-Y. You know, we always use this word, my. My boss is killing me. I even hate to go to work because my boss is stressing me out. She stressed me out every day or he stressed you out every day. So we need to, instead of changing that on a word, my, we need to say the boss. So when you say the boss, you're like, hmm. Actually, when you say it, you kind of feel a little bit differently. Instead of saying my boss, when you say the boss, it's like it's giving it, it's not yours, or that person not yours. But when you say my boss, and they're stressing you out, and they um, making you upset and stuff like that, you're owning that by saying my. So you want to say the boss. And another way to look at it too, you know, a lot of people go through a lot of things, a lot of disappointments, and you don't know what your boss, he or she is going through. You know, it could be somebody at home, they could be sick, or they're not even feeling well. So you just don't let it in when they say things to you or bad things to you or try to talk down on you and stuff like that. You know, you can't take it higher up, but you know, you probably know your boss many, many, many years and that person had been the same way. So you just don't let it in, don't let it in uh, what they're saying to you. Or you can just say, thanks for sharing, thanks for sharing that to yourself. Thanks for sharing, but I'm not going to let it in. I know who I am. I know what kind of person I am, you know? I'm not telling you not to go to hurry up, but, you know, a lot of us, um, I shouldn't say us um, because I don't know, but a lot of people, um, they have a boss, and that boss been like that for, a manager been like that for years, years and years and years, and you know, you know, that person, you pretty much know how they're going to be every day. And, you know, think of the good side about it, too. Sometimes they, you know, they joke with you. They, they look out for you. They talk to you. They give you that time off that you want. So you got to kind of look at those things and just not let it in what they're saying and just say, oh, I'm not letting it in. They're probably just having a bad day, a bad day at work or, oh, my boss is stressed or the boss is stressed. Not my boss, the boss is stressed. So when you said the, it's not showing their ownership. You want to give that ownership back to them and not say my. Because when you said my, that's like yours and like, oh, my, my. So it really works, guys. It really works. It worked for me in many situations. And I just said the, the, the boss. And here's another one too. Um, uh, my commute to work is killing me. I dread the traffic. I hate going to work. My way to work is just really just killing me dealing with that traffic every day. Again, same thing. My is like the ownership word. My, my, my. Okay, so you want to say the commute. It's okay. It's, you know, put on some chill music. It's not that bad, you know. It's kind of, um, you know, it's an inconvenience, yeah. But, you know, put on some chill music and just chill because you know what you got to go through anyway before you even go to work so why i keep saying my commute is killing me this my commute to work is just, i'm just dying to even face that you know just change it just change it to 
the commute. And just think about the good things like, okay, well, I do have a job. I do have a job that the boss is not getting on my nerves. I do have a job, you know, that the boss is not on my back all the time. You know, think about all the good things that you can find on that way to work and take that word, my, out of it and call it the. I'm going to tell you a little story right quick. Um, I heard this story a while back, you know, when COVID-19 had started about this cashier. She uh, was very upset. She was at work at a grocery store and she was just throwing uh, items, you know, pricing them and throwing them and pricing them and throwing them back and just really just upset, stressed out and just rude, plain out rude. So the customer kept telling her, hey, well, you put the wrong price on there. That's not right. You're putting the wrong price. So she looked at the price ah, and just look at it and change it. And it was a bad, just a bad, bad attitude. You know, who wants to deal with that, right? So that happened for a while. And then, you know, the cashier never said, I'm sorry, or, you know, I'm sorry, this is what I'm going through or anything like that. She was just playing on rude. And, you know, it takes a strong person to sit there and not say something, you know. So the lady, she went out to a car and the bagger saw her, saw her with the water. And he kept put the water in the car for her, try to help her. And she just told him, you know, that cashier in there, she just playing a little rude. Did you see? And she treated everybody like that. She need to get herself another job. But she don't need to, she don't want to work. She don't need to be to work with that kind of attitude. Because nobody want to deal with that attitude, you know. So she was just going and on and on, telling the bagger about how the cashier just was so rude to her. And just just didn't show no empathy, sympathy, throwing her groceries and stuff. So the bagger told her, so you know what, ma'am, I understand what you were going through in there. And thanks for really not, you know, causing a big scene. But this cashier daughter, she only has one daughter. Her only, only daughter is in the hospital um, battling COVID-19. And she's not doing well. She's on a respirator and she's not doing well. And she can't see her daughter. She has to come to work. That's the only mean that she's getting is her job. She has to go to work. And her daughter is not doing well. And she can't see her daughter. So when she said that, you know, perspective immediately changed to like, well, now I understand. You know, I understand why this person is acting the way they do. So, you know, when you're facing situations like that, you know, try to think about what that person may be going on. Like I was telling you earlier about, about your manager or boss, you really don't know what that person is facing at home, but you don't have to let it in. You don't have to let it in and say, oh, this person having a bad day. I understand that they're having a bad day, but I don't have to let it in. I don't have to let it in because I know who I am. You know, they can't diminish me or tell me anything bad. You know, and I use this technique all the time. I'm not letting it in. Mm -hmm. You can say whatever you say. I don't let it in because I know who I am. So if you can, you know, exercise that and do that too, you know, don't let things in and, and uh, just look on a different side of perspective of things when people do have bad days and if you encounter stuff like that. So another thing is my children is stressing me out. Oh my God, I can't wait to school start back with these kids. It's stressing me out. My children is stressing me out. So, you know, you have to sometimes, you know, you got to sit down and talk to your children. Talk to your children and say, okay, how do you feel about what's happening? How do you feel about um, doing your work online, not going to school, seeing your friends, seeing your teacher? How do you feel? How do you feel in class? You know, do you need help working the computer? Sit down and talk to your children. And, you know, a lot of times you have to put them on a schedule because I know when school was out, when they took them out of school earlier, I had to put my daughter on a schedule like right away because I was working at home too and she's working and trying to find something to do. And she come look at me with a, like a deer in headlights looking at me like, what should I do now? I had to put on a schedule. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, we're going to put you on a schedule so you can know what you're going to be doing from morning to lunchtime and from lunchtime to whatever time it's time to go. Uh, relax and watch TV, whatever she wanted to do. But, uh, you know, just talk to them, put them on schedule and stuff and just see what's going on with them because this is a big change for them too. These kids used to go into school, play with their friends, running around, and now they at home and all they want to say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, can I have a snack? 
Can I get up something to eat? I'm hungry. I mean, like I heard that every, all day, every day in the summertime. So you have to just talk to your children and, you know, see what's going on with them first and just try to put them on a, a schedule. And, you know, as I was saying, my kids are stressing me out. My children are stressing me, my kids. You know, so just try to talk to them in that way. So you probably have some relief like I did because I definitely had to put my my daughter on the schedule. She had to go on the schedule because, I mean, it was it was something at first. It was a big challenge for me at first. So here's a big one, the big one here I want to talk to you guys that we all said it. I have said it in the past as well. And it's that uh, people say, oh, my ex-husband did this and my ex-husband did that or my ex-wife, my ex-wife is doing this or my ex-wife took everything I have. But see, you're putting ownership by saying my. Your ex been gone probably 30, 40 years and you're still holding on to my. Let it go. Let it go. Said the ex. The ex. <laughs> ex-wife, the ex-husband. And then when you said the, you kind of like feel better. You feel better instead of saying my. You don't own that person. I mean, you don't own that person. You're not even together with that person. That person been gone for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and you still said my ex. So I just said the ex, the ex. My ex-girlfriend, same thing. Started saying DX. Don't own that anymore. You, you gotta let it go for some reason. Some reason it did not work out. That's why they are an ex. It did not work out. So don't say my ex. It's, it's gone. Like like the shower and the water. It's gone. You can never get it back. Sometimes you do get it back. Then you can say my ex or my girlfriend, you know, whatever you want to say. But you know, after it's over and done. You know, just let it go. Let it go. Don't keep holding on to my mind because they're not yours anymore. They're gone. They're not yours. It's gone. So you can say the. Okay? So that's another one I wanted to tell you because so many people say that. And I used to say it until I, I got wiser and I don't say it anymore. So I said the. Not meaning that. I mean, I do wish everyone, ex, a person, you know, my life. Uh, well and everything and sometimes I do talk to them but you know it's okay D okay all right so another thing to I want you to let you know your mind doesn't care if it's good or bad right or wrong healthy or unhealthy it just let it in and let it in and let everything in your mind soaks up everything that you think and what you say so when you say my ex, it's like you said, oh, my ex, you're still holding on to my ex. Okay, well, that's been like 30 years or 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10, whatever the case may be. So just say the ex. And you'll feel better too. You'll feel better. So if you're married or you're in a relationship, you can say, oh, my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my wife. So that make you feel good, right? So why didn't you want to hold on to my ex when you don't even have the ex anymore? The ex is not even in your life anymore let it go so that's what i want to talk to you today guys the power of my you need to uh, sometimes just not say my because that's showing ownership it's showing ownership uh to you that you don't even really need to have because like i say your mind doesn't care if it's good or bad right or wrong healthy or unhealthy it just let it in so you want to do and say good things you know and then a lot of times like i told you before you know, you see somebody having a bad day, the boss at work is, you know, stressing you out. You know, just don't let it in and just think, okay, well, this person been like this for years, you know. Sometimes people have gone to HR and sometimes, you know, they don't want to for simple reasons, different reasons. You know, maybe they feel they may lose their job. I don't know what it may be, but you don't have to let it in. You know, as long as there's no physical thing going on, you know, hurting yourself or others, then okay, then you really have to say something, but it's that's your own discretion. But I just want to let you know about how you can not let things in and let things affect you. And also using the word my can definitely affect you when you don't really need to use the word my. You can say the, and it definitely feels so much better when you said the. And don't want it, it's not yours. Okay? Okay. So, 
that's what I want to talk to you guys today. Hope you got something valuable out of this uh, video. And you know what I tell you guys, I already experienced it, did it. So that's why I just love doing these YouTube channels because you know I experience it. I know somebody out there need to hear this stuff. They need to hear it because um, you just never know who life you may change. You never know who life out there or someone who needs to hear it, okay? All right, so have a wonderful week this week, a blessed week, and again, thank you for joining me. Definitely appreciate that, okay, guys? Have a blessed week. Peace out and much love to you. Peace, blessed week. Is it on? Is it recording? Oh.